The first cup of our first laminate is already warmed up. We are getting ready to jump right into this bait making today because I'm a little excited to get started. Hot off the presses, six brand new hollow shift powders in the Aurora line and eight new siren scales, which are color shift flake. Let's dive right into this. We've got two laminates to do today. I've got four molds. Let's get to the first color. One cup of bait plastics, two, four, two, as is the norm around here. And we're gonna start out with a belly color. This one's called San Andreas. All of these, as I mentioned, are in the Aurora line, which is the white powder. The hollow shifts are really two different um, styles in the powders. There's the colored powders, which kind of act on their own. Then there's the Aurora powders, which are all this white base. These you can use in a couple different ways. You can add them to clear plastisol if you want, and you'll get a bit of a shimmer, but when you turn the bait a certain way, it goes translucent. You can no longer see it, which could be a really good thing. Secondly, you can add one, two, three drops of black, and it starts bringing out all of the shifty colors that are in these powders, but you still retain that translucency. You can just see more going on inside the bait. The third way, and what we've experimented with here as of late, is continuing on with the black not just one two three drops but like 10 15 20 and what that does is it saturates the bait but it brings out all of these colors and just amplifies them yes you sacrifice transparency right light can't get through it but what you get in bringing those colors out and just seeing them in their full glory as it were it's pretty sweet. So that is what we are going to do today, starting, as I mentioned already, with San Andreas. So let's get the black pigment out, and we're gonna do uh, 15 drops of this. There we go. Classic black, well-saturated. To that, let's add one-eighth of a teaspoon of this new tasty powder. Ooh, baby. There's a little preview. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> Ooh, yes. That's going to be a sweet belly color. To that, we're going to dive into our first taste of siren scales. This one is called Ariel. You can see all the different colors going on in there. Michael tells me that this stuff is actually the same material as the hollow shift powder. It's just, I guess, laser cut differently and the flakes are all different sizes, which will be interesting today given some of the molds that I have picked out. I want to test small baits versus bigger baits with these, see how it works with the gate going through. All of that good stuff. Without any more ado, let's get an eighth of a teaspoon, which we might need more. Now these, I will readily admit, may benefit from a non-saturated plastisol, only because they might get lost with dark black. As expected, it needed a little bit more, so I went ahead and doubled that up put another eighth of a teaspoon in there for a quarter total and it's looking pretty darn nice. Next cup is warmed up ready to roll back into the hollow shift powder. Got a new one here called thread fin. First up though is black. Same deal. 15 drops. One eighth of a teaspoon of our thread fin. Let's just watch this come alive. Oh yeah. So cool. Now we need some siren scales. This one's called glimmer fin. So we had thread fin. I figured glimmer fin was an appropriate complement to it. Let's just go right to a quarter teaspoon since that seemed to work out best last time. The random sizes of this stuff is gonna make for some really interesting texture. See how some of it's small, some of it's bigger. I just think that's gonna make it really cool looking. For those of you that watched the uh, Hobby Lobby color shift flake video, that color shift from Hobby Lobby did not like the heat. 
These guys, I've taken them back up to 350, 340, 350. I think one even done back up to 360 at those high levels. And as it sits right now, this stuff looks awesome. So very heat resistant, resistant rather, which has always been kind of a deal with the hollow shift uh, powders. Very heat friendly. So let's get it done. Back color is on the left. Two molds to shoot. A big one and a little one. There's the big one. There's the little guy. And uh, by the look of the top, it's gonna look good. All right, we're cleaned up around here. The mold is cooled off. Let's check it out. This is the big one first. What did I choose? Oh, baby. Can you say freaking frog? Coming out on the belly and looking quite tasty. I'm super pleased to see the siren scales show up. I was worried. <laughs> I was so excited to use this stuff. I knew I wanted to saturate some stuff and see the full breadth of the, of the color. And then I thought, wait a minute, the scale might get totally lost, but it did not. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Holy moly. You see why I picked the frog? Mm -hmm. Let's check out the little one. Oh baby. Whip waddy action. Uh-huh. There's the two colors right down the middle. It's kind of hard to see against this mold. There you go. Now you can see it a little bit better. Man, that's nice. And the flake, right? That flake came through, which was part of my desire to experiment a little bit with this. As I mentioned, the siren scales are all different sizes. They're irregularly cut. They're all different sizes. And I didn't know how well that would get through the gate when the gate was really small. Something like this, you know, a big old fat gate, it's gonna be a piece of cake. But small baits like this, theoretically, siren scales are gonna be thin enough that they'll kind of collapse and be able to move through that gate and make it into the baits, not block anything, keep plastisol from being able to go through. And uh, I would say that we have confirmed that today. There's plenty of flake through all of these and they look fantastic. First cup of our second laminate, all warmed up and ready to go. As much as I would love to saturate this guy for this color that's coming up, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna look at it in a different way. The black, only five drops. Three, we'll go, hmm. yeah, let's do five. Four. Yeah, I can still see through just a bit, see that? So I think that's gonna work out really well. Our color of choice is Joker. And this one is a purple to green. Eighth of a teaspoon, just like before. And let's watch it happen. Oh yeah. Mm, you see the purple in there? And then the green, and then the purple, and then the green, and then the purple. Why on this camera? It looks blue to you guys yet again. Oh, that's so frustrating. I swear, it's a beautiful green. Let's add some flake to it. We already did uh, Ariel. It only seemed appropriate that we now do Ursula. And let's go all the way to a quarter. I'm anticipating some purple goodness from the Ursula flake and it is delivering. Oh yeah. That was the top color. Bottom color all warmed up as well. That's gonna be kind of a uh, dark smoke with four drops in it. So we don't wanna go super saturated on the bottom. I do, however, wanna use monkey milk because, well, monkey milk is awesome. So let's do like uh, five drops. Always looking nice. Good start. Now we need some flake, obviously siren scales. This one is called Murloc. A lot of cool colors in there as well. And I am not going to be bashful with it. We are gonna go with a, a full quarter, maybe more. When I was thinking about this one, I was wanting a heavy flake belly. Really the flake to be the star of the show. We may go a little bit more. I think we should. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That is a half teaspoon with 
five drops of monkey milk and it is looking dandy. All right, we're heated back up once again, dual injector in hand, and once again, man, these things stood up to the heat, no problem at all. Had to warm both cups back up, and I see no erosion whatsoever. So I got good vibes going into this one. Hopefully I can shoot it right. Purge that. Got a big bait here. And now our little bait. See what I mean? Just as bright and as vibrant as ever before after reheat. And if there was going to be a problem, we'd be able to see it with this one since it's got very little uh, colorant in it. When the purge pile <laughs> looks that good, I only have good expectations for the baits. It seemed only appropriate if we did the 1.7 tiny whip wad that we bust out the mega magnum size 7.6 inch whip wad. Oh, look at that shifty goodness. Oh, I knew Joker was going to be killer. Oh, there you go. See the purple to the green and you can now see green for some reason. Whatever. I'm not complaining, but purple to green, back to purple. Oh my lands, that looks good. Check out the tail. All of that flake. Oh my word. And now the belly. I mean, we got to, I was really excited about the Joker, if you can't tell. Let's look at the belly. Bellies are on point. Look at their light refraction. Oh my God. Goodness gracious me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to get bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Golly, how do you follow that up? We actually have another mold. It's not a little one, but it was one that I wanted to see as well. The two-inch Slayer. Oh, yeah. This one would probably benefit because it's so small, right? It doesn't have the surface area. doesn't have the thickness like a smoke color is going to look a lot darker in a thicker bait like this. Little ones like this, you can actually get away with more saturation, but that looks killer. Clear water presentation, all of that reflective belly. Oh my goodness. Tell me that wouldn't catch a crappie or two. So many new toys to play with and they are fantastic. These siren scales are really something else. Make sure you head over to the website, check them out, as well as the new powders. There's actually six, as I mentioned, and we only dove into a couple, so more to come on that end. This was a ton of fun, guys. Hope you enjoyed the journey. Thanks, as always, for coming along with me. And until the next build, see you guys in the shop.